Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Smash JT. In this episode, I want to talk about my favorite, most obscure video game of all time. And there's a good chance that a ton of you have never played this game, and it definitely deserves your time. You want a hint? Kirk Cameron is an actor in it. Hey! Mother. Yep, that Kirk Cameron. If you're anything like me, you get sick of the modern gaming scene from time to time where it's perfect graphics and incredible storylines and seemingly unending options available and what you want to do with every single game, and you yearn for a time of more basic games, more simpler things to do. And that's what I was doing the other day. I went to my collection of games and I was like, I want to play a game that I haven't played for a very long time that's actually pretty good. And I stumbled upon my Sega Saturn collection, and the game that I found, I had to share with you guys. The game is called The Horde. If you guys have never played this game, you definitely need to check it out. The Horde is a hybrid action strategy game that was originally released on the 3DO. Soon after that, it was ported to the Sega Saturn and MS-DOS. Those are the only three systems this game's available for. But if you want to play the true version of it, you gotta play it on 3DO or Saturn, because the MS-DOS version only has a slideshow. It doesn't have the full motion video like these ones do. Your Majesty slips! Your Majesty! Down you go to the king! The boy is attacking the king! God! God! And while the full motion video scenes are extremely cringy at times, there's a certain charm to them that just makes you filled with nostalgia while you're watching them. Especially the scenes with Kirk Cameron. I cannot believe this guy was actually in a video game. Best known for his acting on ABC's sitcom Growing Pains, airing 1985 to 1992. And after doing this video game, his career kind of went into nosedive and spiraled out of control and... He eventually turned himself into an evangelistic ministry guy where he goes around and preaches about religion all the time. One thing we know about hurricanes and, and, and all weather is that this is not Mother Nature in a bad mood. This is a spectacular display of God's immense power. But anyways, the reason why I had to share this game with you guys is it's an incredible hidden gem. A ton of people missed out on this game the first time around, and if you're one of those people, you definitely need to give it a shot checking it out right now. The game has a really interesting gameplay mechanic where you play the part of a hero that saves a town from an oncoming horde of monsters called the Horde. With aspects of SimCity mixed with ActRaiser, but more real-time strategy and real-time battles involved with it, and honestly, I've never played another game quite like it. I feel like the Horde would be an incredible game to bring to modern consoles, especially because of the limited availability being on the 3DO and MS-DOS and the Sega Saturn. A lot of people didn't get to experience this game back when it first came out. And while it's incredibly fun, it's not without its huge downfalls. It really shows its signs of being an old game, because when you start playing this, it's brutally difficult. There's no introduction as far as how to play the game, there's no tutorial, there's nothing that tells you what you should do. You have to do trial and error at the beginning of this game to figure out how to put your town together the best way possible to defend it from the oncoming horde. And you will die a lot. And the problem is when you die, it doesn't just send you back to the title screen, it sends you back to the very beginning of the game where the Crystal Dynamics logo that you can't skip plays, and you have to sit through that for like 10 seconds before it goes back to the title screen, and then you can finally load your game up and then start from where you saved it last. The brutal difficulty is only topped by its disregard for caring for you continuing to play the game. It's like when you die, the game doesn't even want you to keep playing. It basically just sends you back out saying, yep, you gave it a good shot. Better luck next time, why don't you try again another day? And part of the difficulty is the controls on the game. It feels like the gamepad is extremely stiff. But if you're able to look past the high difficulty and tough controls and see this game for what it is, the certain charm that it holds that a lot of the games back in the day and even now are missing, you'd see exactly what I mean by why this game is such a great hidden gem. Right now, the Horde is going on eBay for about 25 bucks to the Sega Saturn, a little bit more on the 3DO. 
fairly affordable for a retro game that's hard to find. So if you haven't played this one, definitely check it out. And if you do find yourself fortunate enough to sit down and play this game, you'll quickly learn that money is everything. The gold that you collect by killing the horde, saving your crops, and having cows produce milk in your town is crucial for survival. While it's a really odd mix, it strikes a perfect balance, and it's a truly unique gameplay experience that's a ton of fun. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys today. Let me know down in the comments section below what you think about the Horde, and if you've ever played it before. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good one. Weather is sent to cause us to respond to God in humility, awe, and repentance. Put your